Good morning. We're going to have a little discussion now about floating point arithmetic in MATLAB. MATLAB adheres fairly closely to the IEEE floating point standard, so most of what happens is predictable according to that model, but it's not necessarily predictable if you don't know things about floating point arithmetic and only know things about real arithmetic. So we'll begin with a more or less random large number. Uh, I'm going to take 10 to the 17th and then add some smaller bits to it, pi times 10 to the 9th. And if we look at that, it just says, oh, that's 1.000 times 10 to the 17. And we can't see everything. Uh, we want to see all of the digits, the decimal digits that MATLAB uses. We say format wall. And then we type M again, and we see that indeed it's 1.000, but it's at 314159 times 10 to the 17. So there's a representation of a large number. And we're going to look at associativity of arithmetic here. I'm going to add 1 to that large number, and then I'm going to subtract that large number. So the brackets mean do the 1 plus m first. Here I'm going to add a little extra space there just for readability reasons. Um, so you see that I'm doing 1 plus m first and then subtracting m. And MATLAB says, according to the IEEE standard, that the answer should be 0. But if we do exactly the same things in a different order, we get a different answer. So unlike ordinary arithmetic, flowing point arithmetic is not associative. The answer you get depends on the order in which you do the operations. Now it's true that whatever number uh, I add, let's just take uh, uh, two random numbers. Uh, A is 0 0.345 and B is equal to uh, 1 uh, 17th. So just to take random numbers, uh, if we say A plus B, we get one number. If we say B plus A, we get exactly the same number. So it's always going to be true that A plus B equals B plus A. So at least floating point operations are commutative. But there are surprises with that, and we'll come back to that a little bit later. So the reason that 1 plus m uh, turned out to be identical to m, and I'll show you that it's identical by looking in hex format. So we say format hex, and if we give you m in, this is the hexadecimal representation of m, that's what MATLAB actually uses. And if we add 1 to m, it really is bitwise identical. Let's go back to our decimal arithmetic, just because it's easier to understand. And we're going to look at a particular number called eps of m. And that's 16. Why is eps of m equal to 16? It's because if I add 16 to m, I get something different. It looks different to m in hex 16 plus m and m and you see that in the first case we have a, we end in a 6 6 in the second case we end at a 6 5 these numbers are one bit different eps of m is the next uh, machine number to m so this says i could add 8 to uh, m and that would round up to six, ending in 6, 6, but I, could, I can't add 7 to m, and that rounds down to get uh, m itself. It's hard to get used to the fact that floating point arithmetic is different to real arithmetic, that we lose associativity, and we lose uh, the fact that uh, when you add a positive number to something, you don't necessarily increase. So here I've added 7 to m, and it hasn't changed the answer at all. So if I go uh, 7 plus m 
minus m, I get 0. That's the internal representation for 0, by the way. Uh, it's in hexadecimal format. But if I do 8 plus m minus m, I get something else. What is that? Uh, we'll have to do and eight plus m minus m gives me sixteen, which is a little bit weird. It's not the same as uh, eight plus m minus m. And these crazy behaviors are difficult to get used to, but we'll see that. This is a necessary consequence of the compromise that is floating point arithmetic. Until next time.